Now, when it comes to processes, guys, you've got to define your business. Do you do people call you, or do you call out? And then, what are the stages that happen up until money is in the bank? Then, what happens after money is in the bank? Now, a lot of small businesses they suffer from this. A lot of small businesses don't do very well with after-sales service. Doesn't make sense. So you're going to come to my company or to Company X and say, we've got to, we can come and massage you and reduce your stress, blah, blah, blah. Tell us when it's Valentine's Day, when people are stressed, or when there's a conference. People say yes. They say, book your five masseuse. They come and they massage people. What happens after? The big money is not when you do the work. The big money is what happens after you've done the work. Does it make sense? And in a lot of businesses, people don't do this. I've got guys that do work for me, very small scale guys. They'll only wait for me to call them. They never call me and say, hey, I did this for you at this time. How are things? What more can I do? To you understand? Once they've seen money coming from my account to their account, they become very happy and they're gone. All right? So you've got to question yourself and say, are my process clearly defined? Maybe I should ask you that question. The manufacturing one with the products, that might be easy because your production, your production has to be clear, but your sales cycle is it clearly defined. Are you asking me? Yes. <coughs> okay, so currently um, I have the people who are buying from me. Um, I have a sales rep <coughs> slash maybe distributors. <coughs> so after the test um, process is <coughs> underway, that's when I can approach you know, the, the retailers and talk <coughs> about discount clicks because they still are waiting on the certification from SABS. So <coughs> right now, yes, I do the direct selling, <coming>, but mostly are the people who are coming to buy from me. <coming> and this caters for different provinces. I'm gonna, you see, so your, your strategy, you want to go into retail, yes? You wanna yes, but I don't want to use the direct selling as well. Yeah, yeah. you want to use direct selling as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you must do this. Multi-level marketing. For products like this, it's the best selling tool on planet Earth. What is your cost for this? Zero. You just have to sell people the dream, give them a good product, and they go and make it happen. It's as simple as that. And there are a lot of, I mean, multi-level marketing has made more millionaires in a very long time. Now it's being overtaken by online. Online is really making people really cool. Now, guys, each and every one of you, it doesn't matter how small or how big your business is, you have to define your process. Because if you don't define your process, you're going to incur this thing called PONC. The word PONC means price of non-conformance. It means there's going to be a time in your business or a process in your business where you bottleneck. Okay? Bottleneck, it means something is not happening. And when something is not happening, it is costing you money. You understand what I'm trying to say? And if you don't know that you've got this, which means there's, you, there's some, along the way, you lose money. Because things just fall off. You don't even know things are falling off. Does it make sense? So you've got to define your process from beginning to end. And like I'm saying, the greatest money happens after the sale, not during the sale. And a lot of people think that it ends when you've got money in the bank. That's not where it ends. That's where it begins. I don't like selling. I like farming. So ask yourself, how am I going to farm? Because if you sell to one person, that person has a cousin, has an aunt, has an uncle, has a friend, has a, goes to a certain church, comes from a certain school. Just think about how many lines that person can give you. Now, how many of you ask for referrals in your business? One, two, three, four. And the rest of you, five. The rest of you don't ask for referrals. But guys, referrals is farming, it's not selling. Because the greatest marketing tool on planet Earth is word of mouth. Not a Facebook video, not a Twitter. It's when somebody says, I've eaten food in this restaurant, it's amazing, the service is ho it's unbelievable, then I will go based on your word of mouth. The same thing happens in the business. I've been speaking for 18 years. I have never ever marketed my business. 100% of my business is word of mouth. Now that we're changing the model to, to go online, is then we're going to spend some money to position ourselves on Facebook, but all along, 100%. And everywhere I go, I know which audience I'm speaking to. If I'm going to speak to students, students have got parents. We don't know who their parents are. Maybe their mother is a CEO or a head of whatever. So I've got ways that I prepare myself to be selling to their parents while I'm speaking to the child. So that the child gets home, begins to speak about me to the parent, and the parent searches for me, finds me, and I make, I make things happen. And when the parent says, I had my son says you do A, B, C, and D. I said, oh, by the way, how many of your friends do you believe can have the same effect 
on their children to speak the way that your son spoke to you. Already I'm farming before he, I even close his sale. His sale is not important. What's important is what I can farm from the person that calls me. Does it make sense? So guys, you've got to define your process. In my company, when somebody calls, they are clearly defined processes. You call, you look for my date, am I available? Yes, if I'm available. Is it a conference? Where's the conference? In South Africa, is it overseas? Do you need my profile? Do you have my profile? Have you downloaded my profile? Do you need my, my video? Do you understand? All those things are clearly defined because every client calls and they're at a certain level. Because if you don't have processes, a client might call you, but the call is already here. But because you don't have clearly, clearly defined processes, you want to bring them here. And then guess what happened? You lose the sale. There are people that sell and they sell themselves out of a sale because they don't know how to, when to close. You understand what I'm trying to say? So if your business is not clearly defined about where you begin it, where you end it, and what are the processes that you need, and sometimes, again, you've got to ask yourself, what is it that you outsource in your process? You can't do everything yourself. I know a lot about social media, I know a lot about online stuff, but I don't do those things. I get people to do them, but I know exactly what I want them to do. Does it make sense? Websites. Websites are dying, by the way. I'm sure you guys are aware of that. Facebook is going to be the place where we meet because people want an instant answer. They want it now. They want an experience now. They want to know that you can deliver now. Not next week, not, oh, go to my website. By the time you say go to my website, on, on their way to your website, they see another website. And they are diverted and they are gone. So we're living in a very precarious world. Maybe let me ask you, how long do you think a person normally spends on looking at a website? How many minutes? How many seconds? Eh? 30, 30, 10, 15, 15 3. 3 seconds. 3 seconds. And if your website does not tell them what they want, they're gone. They're going to look for something else somewhere. Three seconds. Long ago, an advert used to be 30 minutes. Then it became three minutes. Now they're saying they're going to become three seconds. So in three seconds, you must tell me your product. You must tell me where I can get it. You must give me the testimonials in three seconds. Because our concentration span is becoming smaller. Because we're being bombarded and bombarded by information. When you walk out here, there's a Twitter, there's a this, there's, a, there's information. So people want to process things very quickly. So if you cannot talk quickly with them, you're out of business. You just don't get it. Does it make sense? So guys, you've got to define your processes. And I'll give you a website that you can get free software that can help you to do, to, to do your, your processes. It's called www.visio.com. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's not, you know, there's, there's, I like the Bible. It says there's nothing new under the sun. And for a very long time, it used to drive me crazy. I'm thinking, what does it mean there's nothing new under the sun? There are new things. The Porsche is a new Porsche. No. But all these things have been there. But our brains were not good enough to put them together. Steve Jobs didn't go to Mars for him to create Apple. He was amongst us. And by the way, the iPod, the technology of the iPod was owned by the people that started that first technology. Sony had the technology to do the Walkman. They did the Walkman. And they had a better version of the Walkman, but they didn't use it. Steve Jobs took it and created iPod. And while everyone was excited about iPod, they created Apple Music. You understand? All of these things have been there, but it's just that our brains are not at that level where we can pick them up and bring them to life. So now here's the deal. Once you've created your processes, there's a process called Kaizen. It's a Japanese philosophy. Now this philosophy means... Small, continuous changes. It means if it takes 10 hours to do something, can it be done in nine and a half hours? Can it be done in eight hours? Can it be done in seven hours? Can it be done in six hours with less electricity, less people, less, 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 less? Does it make sense? That's why Japanese are very ahead of technology because of what they do. They consistently check things. But unfortunately, they have now moved to a very powerful one called Kaikaku. Kaikaku means radical change. They do something, they say, we don't want to change it 
just a little bit because people can copy us. How do we create a 10th generation process of the same photocopier machine? But it must be 10 generations ahead of time. So your business enters disruption. So we're still in processes, okay? Now ask yourself this one question, the business that you're doing now, how is it going to be disrupted and by who? And if you don't know, you're out of business, you just don't know it. Does it make sense? Who's got a father or a mother or a cousin or an uncle who's a lawyer? Who do you know who's a lawyer? You. You've got a friend who's a lawyer. Tell your, eh? yeah. Tell your friend she or he's out of business, they just don't know it. <laughs> no, it's, if, it means they've got to get to their next game. Now, there's, a, there's, a, there's an AI, artificial intelligence called Webster, created by IBM. Now, this AI in the USA, they have put all the court cases ever argued in the history of America in this artificial intelligence. And they say the probability of this AI of winning a case is 98.99%. It's owned by IBM. Very soon it will be on your Apple phone. <laughs> so you will not lead a lawyer to go to court. You just sit there and open your iPhone, put it on record, attach your AI to your recording. As the people who accuse you accuse you, the AI start to, to talk about probabilities of getting out of that trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this is disruption, ladies and gentlemen. It's very scary, but, but it's both scary and exciting. Yeah, but I'm not, okay, I'm not sure if I'm being pessimistic, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how many criminals will get away. Yeah, no, but, no, but you see what, no, what they say, one of the things that this AI, because the technology that we create must not be for our doom, but for our boon. You understand? And everybody that does now, Facebook created, I don't know if you guys have heard the story. Everybody's playing around with AI. Now, Elon Musk said something very fascinating, and him and Mark Zuckerberg are disagreeing. You know, Elon Musk says, you know, I have a feeling that AI is like waking up a demon. And when this demon goes crazy, and hope he can go and get a, a Roman Catholic priest with a cross and some water to pray and stop this demon. He says, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to get ourselves into trouble. As he was saying that, Facebook created two bots, two robots, and these robots started speaking to each other in a language that they didn't know, and they had to switch them off. So already, whatever we create, we've got to be careful of how it's going to affect us eventually. We can't just go crazy. So